Seek your face and cry out because you're holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, King of kings. Jesus, Majesty. I can wait for eternity. Join the song they're already singing. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Just to bow down, just to bow down before your throne. Seated high, see your face, I cry out, because you're holy. Holy, holy are you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, King of kings. You're the King of kings. Jesus, majesty. Jesus, those who have heard well done proclaiming forever that you're the one who's faithful 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 are you
You are so worthy, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We honor you today. Your city. just thank you Lord what a wonderful privilege to just come into your presence this morning Lord as we raise our hands this morning as an act of surrender we have only one agenda this morning and that is to glorify Jesus so Holy Spirit we come this morning and we just ask Lord help us to lift up the name that is above all names the name of Jesus Christ Lord this morning as we come we we come boldly we come boldly, Lord, as sons, as equal heirs of Christ Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that you loved us first. Thank you for, for loving us. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. And this morning, we just want to give you a praise offering in the house. We want to lift up the name that is above all names. Can we just lift up his name this morning? Can we worship Jesus this morning? Can we worship Jesus? Lord, just receive our worship this morning. Receive our worship. Lord, this morning we just want to direct our adoration to you as we stand in awe this morning. Father, that we as a ministry, that we can say this morning, as David said, that we taste and see that our God is good. So, Lord, this morning, we just want to thank you. We just want to thank you. We just want to thank you. Thank you, Father. And we want to declare our love to you this morning. We look to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the hope of the nations. But you are also the hope of Bombella. You are also the hope 
of Mpumalanga. You're also the hope of South Africa. You're also the hope of Africa. And so this morning we lift up your name, your name, Lord, your name. Father, as we pray for our nation this morning, Father, your word stands true. Every promise in your word is yes and amen. Every promise, every prophecy that you have spoken over our beautiful nation, Lord, we will see the manifestation of that. Lord, we will see it with our own eyes. And so this morning, Lord, we speak life into every promise. We speak life over every prophecy over our nation. And we thank you, Father, this morning that as we lift up your name, South Africa steps into its rightful place, into its prophetic destiny. Lord, that we will do what we've been called to do, Lord, that we as a nation will rise up and as a nation that we will declare the name of Jesus, Father, the name of Jesus. Father, as we lift up the people that you've raised up in authority in our nation, Father, your word says that you place those that are in authority. And Father, you command us to pray for kings and queens. And so this morning, Lord, we pray for our government. Father, we declare this morning, according to Isaiah 43, verse 19, that you are doing a new thing in our nation. You are doing a new thing. And we release that word today. We prophetically release those words, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That South Africa will fulfill its mandate in Jesus' mighty name. No devil, no demon will stop it. We will not be moved. We will not be shaken. But we, as the body of Christ, we will rise up in this hour and we will arise and shine for our, for your for you are our king lord we will arise and shine arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon our nation father we pray for the wind of your spirit this morning to move in our nation lord move in our nation. Father, we, we, we pray for fresh fire, Lord, in our nation. We pray for fresh fire, Lord. Open the windows of heaven and pour out your fire upon our nation, Lord. We just honor you this morning. We just honor you. We just honor you. We just honor you. We love you. We love you, Lord. We adore you. We adore you. Thank you for your sweet presence in this place. Holy Spirit, Lord, that you will just come this morning because we are hungry, Lord. We are hungry for more of you, hungry for your presence, Lord, your sweet presence this morning. As we come into the secret place this morning, Have your way in and through us, Lord. Have your way in and through us. Touch every heart this morning. Every heart, every heart, Lord. We want a fresh encounter with our first love. We want a fresh encounter with Jesus this morning. We just love you. We love you. We love you so much. We love you so much. We love you so much, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just give Jesus some praise in the house this morning? Can we give Jesus praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Thank you, family. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It feels like we just want to move in and stay here. (laughs) Oh, I'm so hungered and desire to just be like the Israelites, to camp around the presence of God. And I believe that we are in that season, that it is our hunger, it is our hunger that will truly cause the manifestation of His, of His sweet presence. And I'm just sharing my heart here this morning. That is what I want. I want to I wanna see Him. I want to experience Him. I want to touch His face in this season. I want to touch His face. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just give me a moment. Just give me a moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We love you so much. We love you. We love you so much. 
Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. And to all our first-time visitors, all our Facebook friends, thank you so much for joining us. And today is truly just a celebration of the goodness and the faithfulness of Jesus. I want to say in advance, as I greet you, I want to say that no man takes glory for what Jesus has done through this ministry. It's all Him. It's all Him. In fact, sometimes I stand back and I'm like, how <laughs> did this happen? How did this happen? It's only Him. It's only Him. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. And um, there are some very special people and everybody in the house. You are all special. I want to say thank you for joining us. Um, I want to, before I carry on, baby, can I just have my, my book and everything there? Thank you. And my water. I want to just ask everybody, we've got some clipboards in the house. If you can maybe just fill in your details and then just pass it on. Um, it doesn't make you a member of our church, but we, it, it just makes it easier for us, uh, you know, to, uh, to serve you. And so uh, please fill in the clipboards and at least we can pray for you. If you have any needs, we can at least then stand in agreement with you. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Just the Bible says when you... When the Lord gives you a wife, He gives you a good thing, a good thing, good thing. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Well, family, this morning, as you know, we are celebrating seven years of God's goodness and His faithfulness. And there are many of our friends in the house that, that actually started with us. And, you know, they're all running with their own ministries. But they are here today to truly celebrate with us what Jesus has done. And so I would like to just first and foremost before we introduce our very special speaker and his beautiful wife, I would like to just this morning also just um, welcome uh, the Christian Family Church uh, Lofeld Sons in the house. Um, they are all here, and so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna introduce them to you. I'm just gonna ask them to please stand as we welcome them this morning. So we've got from Christian Family Church House of Dominion in Kabukweni. We have Pastor James and our Lady Piri. And uh, you can stand, please. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. And as Pastor Lee always says, you are our firstborns. You are our firstborns. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Then also from Christian Family Church, Victorious Matsulu, we have Pastor Daniel and Pastor Bawinlile Nguenya. All the way, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. We have also from... Uh, Christian Family Church Resurrection Life to, in Tequani South. We have Pastor Kate Skosana. Thank you so much for joining us, Pastor Kate. And then we have Christian Family Church Jehovah Restoration in Kabukweni. Also, Pastor Numbula Ntumbeni. Christian Family Church Consuming Fire, all the way from Shilozi, uh, Apostle Wilson, and Pastor Nontlantla Mishupa. Thank you so much for joining us today. We also have some associates today in the house, associates of Christian Family Church International. We have Pastor Nurse Nkosi and her husband, Elliot Nkosi, and she's from God's Mercy in Christ Embassy, all the way from Nkomazi. Thank you so much for joining us. And then we've got uh, from Maranatha Almighty Church in Aconhook, we have Pastor Moses and Lucy Matlaule. Thank you very much for joining. All the way. They drove for about two and a half hours to get here. Thank you so much. Yes, let's give them a hand. Then we also have some friends from Johannesburg. We have, uh, yes, Pastor Eddie and Pastor Natasha Buertes. They are the overseers of Christian Family Church Brackman under, under the leadership of uh, Pastor Linda Liebritz. She is the founding and... Uh, Founding pastor and senior pastor of Christian Family Church Brackpan. And then last and but not least, I want to also just uh, welcome Evangelist Matthew and Monique Lee. They are from Christ Heartbeat International Ministries. Thank you so much for joining us. And then we also have a, a close friend of ours, and he's also in the process of becoming uh, a covenant partner. And I would like to acknowledge him this morning, Pastor Shadrach Sitole in Metafen. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, before, as I said, before we introduce um, our very special guest, our friends, our family, I'm going to ask Pastor Lee just to come to the stage. Can we just get a mic for her, please? Thank you so much. Just um, a mic, thank you. Um, so, baby, I was going to ask you this morning. <laughs> I was going to ask you, what, 
What is your highlights for the oh, last baby. seven years? Okay, and you, I know you're a high eye, and I'm limiti limiting you to only three. <laughs> you see, he doesn't tell me that he's going to ask me this question because he's so scared I take longer than three minutes or a minute. Did you say three minutes? No, no, Her I said answer. three, three, three highlights, baby, three highlights. <laughs> three highlights yes. of the last seven yes. years. Well, firstly, it would be all the sons and daughters sitting in the front row. Mm -hmm. To see the army that yes. God is building. Yes. And we believe that the Lord is going to populate the low felt region, Pumalanga, the whole Eastern Gate with CFCs. And as we know, it's God's church. CFC is the Lord's church. It's Bible based. It's the uncompromising word of God. So I must say, to see what God has built in the CFC Sons definitely is a highlight. And then my baby... Everybody's, everyone's my baby. Everything's my baby. Oh, sponsor. I don't want to ever let go. I want to just hold on. But if I look at what God has done in the Bible colleges and how he went and when we came, when he brought us from Joburg, we didn't even think Bible college. We just thought church, church, church. Yeah. And if I see what God has done with the Bible colleges and that he started with the Bible colleges and that he populated the whole of Bombela and surrounding areas full of CFCI Bible colleges. And it warms my heart because I believe me on a shadow of a doubt that CFCI, CFC. Uh, churches that we've been called to equip and empower the soldiers of God and to see how many soldiers he is rising up in the eastern gate makes me happier you know the Lord um, on my birthday the, sorry sorry <laughs> on my birthday the Lord gave me you know he always ministers to me in song and uh, when we were singing no longer a slave you know that part where they go oh oh oh, oh. He said to me, marching orders. He gave me marching orders. And that means every single Eastern Gate soldier, every single Eastern Gate general, God is giving us marching orders for 2023. We are marching out as soldiers of God. And then I think the biggest highlight is that God made me a spiritual mother of everybody in my family. In my CFC Bombella family, I mean, if I look at this church, you know, I want to say to everybody, three quarters of our church are dream teamers. Now, our dream teamers mean that they serve in the house. Three quarters of the church serve. This is a house where they pray. This is a house where they worship. This is a house where they give. And this is a house where they serve. And I want to say to every single family member of CFC Bombella that I would go to war with you any day. Thank you for being with us on the front line. Thank you. And then, of course, you know, you know that you are my ultimate highlight. You are my number one highlight. The fact that I get to do this with you, I'm so honored. I'm so privileged. Um, if I think of what God has done in seven years, and like I said to the church this morning, this is God's party. It's his party. Because I tell you what, seven years, if it was not for him, none of what you see would be happening. And I want to thank you. I'm so humbled that he chose us. And I am, it is my greatest privilege to run alongside you and to follow you wherever the Lord leads. Love you, family. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Can we give a hand to the mother of the house? Yeah. She's, I, I, I don't really know why we've got load shedding in our nation because there's enough energy to boost the whole nation and Africa. I'm just, you know, just a side note. Just a side note. Well, you're still supposed to stand next to me, baby. Baby, you're still supposed to stand next to me. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Okay, William is getting ready, and I would like to, to just direct your attention this morning to the screens, and we're going to put all the lights off. And uh, these are just a few highlights of the last seven years. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just lights, please.
come to realize this this weekend more and more that they need God they need to know God because they don't they need to grow with God for the Holy Spirit to lead them and this is what I take back with me and I want to really tell people to come and experience this to, to come and live this to see what it, what it is like to speak to people that they've heard a little about God but they don't know God to help them and to help them grow into this Can we just give Jesus praise this morning? All glory to our King. All glory to our King. Well, family, this morning we have two very, very, very special uh, friends in our house. They are not only friends. They are our family. Um, they are a personal friends of both myself and Pastor Lee. And, uh, you know, we've, we've walked a long road together in the spirit and uh, so this morning, um, I'm so privileged, both of us are so privileged to, to have them in the house. You know, they are two very special people. They are the founding and senior pastors of um, Sunrise City Church International Ministries on the Barberton Road. And um, so this morning, I want to introduce you, and I'm going to ask um, the wife also to come to the stage. The wife also has something to say this morning. So I'm going to ask us, please, to just put our hands together for Pastor Adam and also for uh, Apostle Dimakatsu. We call her Pastor, uh, Apostle Maki uh, Mongwe. If they can both come to the stage, please come. Let's, um, let's put our hands together for these two amazing, amazing people. Um, I want to, just before I hand over the mic to them, I want to say that Apostle, uh, Apostle Maki, um, 
I want to start with her. We always start with the woman first. I want to say that she is one of the prayer warriors that I admire. And uh, she is a very strong, strong, strong woman with so much passion and so much love. Um, she's also she's also been planting churches. Um, she's I, I don't know how long you guys have been married. Can you maybe just help me with that? Five years. Can we give them a hand? Yes. And uh, and so and Pastor Adam is a true shepherd. You know, um, in the time that I've been dealing with him, he is so in love with Jesus. And, and I love spending time with him because when I do, I feel refreshed and I feel rejuvenated. Um, and he's a prophet to the nations. I want a voice as a prophet to the nation. So I want to just thank both of you. Thank you so much for being with us today. And I know how busy you are. And thank you for taking time out to be with us. I'm going to hand over to you and thank you. Hallelujah. Should I go first, puppy? <laughs> Praise the living God. What an amazing day. What a beautiful day that the Lord has made. Wow. Let's clap hands for Jesus. Let's clap hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We truly thank God for what he is doing through the CFCI, through the dream team, through the leaders of this house. Honestly, no eye has seen and no ear has heard nor has it entered into the hearts of men what God has prepared for this family because you love him so, so much. I want to send a special, special shout out to the house at large. I greet you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All the leaders of this house, praise the living God. Hallelujah. All the servants of God in the house this morning be greeted in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. To Pastor Percy and, and Pastor Lee, thank you so much for having us here. You know we love you so much. When Pastor Percy and Pastor Lee and myself meet at crossings or any other place, we start another church. I don't know if it's CSD, CFCI or Sunrise, but we start a kingdom thing that can keep us there for an hour or longer. We actually forget where we were going to and we begin to pray, we prophesy, we speak over the city. We do all sorts of things because God has really brought us together for such a time as this, for the kingdom work. And truly, uh, uh, your, your words of prophecy, words of wisdom over our lives, we do see them. You are such prophetic beings, Pastor Percy. I always want to say Apostle Percy, always. I always see Pastor Lee as the shepherd and Pastor Percy as the prophetic apostle. But truly, we thank God for what he is doing in and through this house. Thank you so, so much for having us. Pastor Lee, I wish I had that ESCOM energy the kingdom energy. <laughs> Honestly, you need to pray it over me. I need it. The load shedding is too much. But we truly thank God. And I'm going to hand over to Pastor Adam. And the song that's in my spirit, I don't know if you know it, but it's a song that I got for the church as I went up the stairs. It says, Forward we go. Forward we go. Forward we go with Jesus, no more turning back, no more turning back, forward we go with Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful God. We thank God for his grace. Can you look at the person next to you and say, you looking better than yesterday. Now, I... I think I think they did not get it. Tell them you're looking better than yesterday. I don't know what you are doing, but keep on doing it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
want to appreciate um, Apostle and his dear wife, Pastor Lee. You guys are just, you know, this is what, I, when I think of you, I think God realized that there was something that Mpumalanga needed. And um, you are completing a puzzle that we were missing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So let me talk for for me as a black person. Amen. I I want to say he does not see color. Amen. So maybe to you he's a pastor, but to me he's a gift. And a gift needs to be appreciated. You know, a pastor that is not appreciated is like a raisin that it finds itself among peanuts. <laughs> I hope you heard what I said, Rasalem. When a pastor is appreciated, it's like grape, it's juicy, full of life. The Bible says the wine is in the cluster. So when a pastor is not appreciated, everything depreciates. So if you are a member of this church, praise the Lord. You know, he, 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 he buys me coffee and uh, I'm not saying this because he buys me coffee. But I, I also buy him coffee when I, I, I meet him. I, I take care of him. The reason I do that is because I realize he's a gift. Amen. You know, I don't believe that honor is something that is done by black people. But it's a kingdom issue. So I want to challenge each and every person. Let's appreciate this couple. Amen. Let's appreciate them. They don't have to do this. They could be doing something better. But they are here because God has called them. Seven years of hard work. Seven years of pain. Seven years of isolation. Seven years of being alone. Seven years of seeking the face of God. Seven years. You know, we give glory to the roof and the walls, but nobody gives glory to the foundation. What happens behind the scene? What they do for this thing to stand? Hallelujah, glory to God. If there's one thing we need to do is to go and say thank you for being a gift in our life. Seven years. It is a foundation. And the best is yet to come. So, if you want me to prophesy over your pastor, I will say, Pastor Lee, my pastor, go and buy sunglasses because the future is very bright. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, go and buy sunglasses. The future is very bright. Amen. The future is very bright. Christianity is very good at gaining ground, but very bad at losing ground. Let me say that again. Christianity is very good at gaining ground, but very bad at losing ground. Look at what is happening in Europe. We lost ground. But I want to declare upon this ministry 
that I see God giving you more ground. In the next coming seven years, I see you gaining more ground. Your level of influence, income, and identity is about to be inf- increased. Glory to Jesus. Are there people excited here? Am I? Glory to Jesus. This, this is more than the World Cup, Pastor. We can get excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We are going to gain more ground and God is going to do great and powerful and awesome things. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Pastor Percy, can I just ask the church to stand? I want us to pray in tongues just for a few minutes. Let's lift up our hands and pray in tongues if we can. Let's lift up our hands. Let's lift up our voices. I thank you and I bless you and I give you glory and I give you honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you and I bless you. And I give you the glory and the honor. For Father, you are gracious and powerful. There is absolutely no one like you, Jesus. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be magnified. In the name of Jesus. Ricasiando lebresta la banda. Requesende le broshte kelasia, requesanda le broshte kelasia. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, O God. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Jehovah, that you are gracious and powerful, Father. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Can ever sit. Praise the Lord. You know, as I pray, I see, I don't know whether you are a business person, but you canceled your holiday because financially things are not going well. And uh, it's like I can hear you even talking to your wife to say, let's cancel the holiday um, for our finances to be well. But God is telling me, that you are not going to finish 2023 in the same note that you finished this year. Uh, he is, some, something is going to happen in 2023 that your finances is going to, to change. Um, and, and I will want to pray for you when we finish. Hallelujah, glory to God. I will want us to pray for you before we finish. I want us to take this opportunity and go into the word of God. I'm going to talk to you today about the power of naming. The power of naming. Genesis chapter number 17 verse number 5. The power of naming. Glory to Jesus. You can spend your life blaming the past or naming your future. Or you can spend your time cursing the past or blessing the future. It is up to you. You look at what is happening with ESCOM. Look at what's happening in South Africa. You can spend most of your time blaming the government instead of naming your future. It is up to you. You got to decide what you do. And I believe that God has given us The power of naming. And that is what God has given to you. Now listen very carefully. You cannot control birds flying in the air. But you can stop them to build a nest in your house. It is up to you. You cannot control what is happening in the world today. You cannot control what is happening with Ukraine and Russia. But Vasolana, I want to explain this to you. That God has given you the power 
to name what comes in your life. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. And you need to take this very seriously and begin to stand in the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit and God is going to help you. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. We are not moved by situation, we are moved by revelation. So you're going to be a person of revelation, not a person that is created by circumstances. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. If we are to talk about tough situations, pain and everybody, if I can start from him and all of us we share here, Vazolan, this house will be full of tears. But we are not going to focus on what is not going right for us. We are going to focus on what God is doing in our life. And I want to declare to you that this is the time for the church to rise. This is the time for the church to stand. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. You know, I was talking in Matsulu yesterday. You know, the Bible tells uh, that when Jesus multiplied the five loaves and two fish, the disciples, they said to, the, to Jesus, let's dismiss the people. Let them, let, let, let them go away. And Jesus says, feed them yourself. Please listen very carefully. This is not the time for the church to dismiss people with cancer. This is not the time for the church to dismiss people who are suffering. It is time for the church to rise. Because we have the solution. And you have the solution. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The power of naming. Tell the person next to you the power of naming. Give them a high five and tell them the power of naming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I say amen, Vazalan, don't, don't, I, I know that Pastor Percy, the church, uh, we, we, we are mixed. In an African culture, when we say amen, Vazalan, I want a fat one. Not, 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 not a, a, a lean amen. Uh, the one that is coming from Rock Ferreira. No, I want, I want a serious amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Genesis, Genesis 17. Verse number five. Um, this is where God speaks to, to Abraham. And, and you know in, verse, in chapter number 12, God has called him. And his name is Abraham. 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 It's A-B-R-A-M. Now in this scripture, God is changing his name from Abraham to Abraham. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says, no longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. Hallelujah, glory to God. A father of many nations. Remember, this man, his wife is barren. He has no child. God does not need anything to make you a father of many nations. You see, the only thing that you need to be a father of many nations is a word. The word is enough to make you what God wants you to be. Hallelujah, glory to God. Before there was this church, there was a word. God gave them a word. You are not here because you wanted to be here. You are here because of the word. Peter said, where can we go? Because in you, there are words of life. If you are connected to a pastor because of miracle, you are bound to leave that pastor. But if you are connected to the pastor because of the word that he gives to you, I'm telling you, you are going to be permanent. You are not going to be a visitor. You will become a pillar, not a caterpillar. Why? Because you understand the way that he gives you. Are you, are you catching me, what I'm saying? Are you, are you, hallelujah, glory to God. You, you, you have to understand this is very important. The naming is very important. God is naming him because God cannot bless something that he did not name. He has to name it. Hallelujah, glory to God. He has to name you. Some of you, your name has to change today. Hallelujah, glory to God. He has to change something. He has to give you a new name so that your life can change. Hallelujah, glory to God. Now, the definition of naming is, it is to decide on what to call someone or something. It is to decree by saying, it is an act of giving a name. Now, this is very important for you to understand. Because if you miss it, you are missing the message altogether. 
all of us as human beings, we have a deep-seated need to name. Glory to God. We, we like naming people. For instance, if I don't like you, I will name you a name that will make sure that I create a barrier between you and me. He's a liar. But actually you are saying he's a liar. If you are pointing at that person and say he's a liar, about three fingers are pointing at you. So we create barriers with people by naming them. But also, we can also destroy barriers by naming people a right name. Ah, oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. We, 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 we name them. Now, 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 for instance, if you want to, to create a barrier between you and your pastor, you, you start naming him something that is not coming from God. And all of a sudden, there's a barrier between you and your pastor because you have named him. Have you ever realized that we don't name chickens because we cannot eat what we have named? You're not healing, you're not hearing me. You see, you see because once you name something, you get attached to it. I'm telling you, you can't, you, you can't eat your son because you've already named him. <laughs> so we have a deep-seated desire to name. And when, when you go and look at the word of God, it, it is not only God who is naming Abraham from Abraham to Abraham. Now the difference between Abraham and Abraham is the word ha. That, that word ha. Listen to me. doesn't matter what, what. That word ha. It means the breath of God. It does not matter who you are. If you don't have the breath of God. In your life. I'm telling you. You are not going anywhere. Your business can have a good name. But if it does not have the ha. Your, your children can have good names. But if they don't have the ha. I've been in churches that have got good names, but there is no ha, there is no wind, there is no, no breath of God, there is no life of God. It is when God gives you that ha. You see, Abraham, him, there is a him at the end. Can, can, can you just give me a fat amen? That is very important for you to understand that. Listen, in Genesis chapter number 2, Verse number 19, God is teaching, is teaching Adam to name. He's teaching Adam to name. It's very important. You know, um, let me share this story. During the time of um, apartheid, uh, Pastor Chris, you know, sometimes we name people and uh, we, we make serious mistakes. This is a funny story. Anyway, I went to the office. I see that there's a lady that she's sitting there. Um, and she's looking at me. You know. I'm like, what is happening with this woman? Why is she looking at me? And, and, and this is what I concluded. I said, no man, this must be apartheid. Why is she looking at me like this? She's, 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 she's hating me. But she's looking at me. And she, she you know, as if she wants to tell me something. It is only when I went outside the office and I looked down, I saw my fly. <laughs> you see, sometimes you can name people names, but your flies. You are not hearing what I'm saying. It is, it is not them. It's you. You you forgot to zip. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you understand what I'm trying to say? And that is what is sick with our country. That is what is sick with people. Is that we start to categorize people. We start to clarify people. And listen to me very carefully. If there's one thing that you must not allow. Never allow a person to, clari to classify you. Because if they can classify you. They can nullify you. Never allow any person to put you in a box. Glory to Jesus. Never allow any person to put you in the box. Glory to Jesus. Education system wanted to put you in the box. 
classroom. Your mother, when you were born, they put you in a, in a box. A court, baby court. Even when you die, they still want to put you in the box. I want to refuse to be in the box as long as you are still conscious about yourself. Don't, listen, don't allow any other name that God did not give you. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. Only allow the name that God has given to you. And listen, you will walk in power and you will walk in authority. That is very important. Because once you believe what God tells you, you are not Abraham, you are Abraham. There is a ham. Hallelujah. Lord. You are a father of many nations. I might not have anything, but he calls me a father of many nations. I don't care what you say, but I care what he does say. I will walk in it because he calls me a father of many nations. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Very important for us to understand this. In Genesis, Genesis 2 verse number 19. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals. He forms them out of wild animals. Like I'm talking about wild animals. Yeah. This is not chicken. I'm talking about wild animals. And all the birds in the sky. Listen to this. The Bible says he brought them to the men. He brings them to the men. And, and the Bible says to see what he will name them. And I like the last part. It says, whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Barcelona, we are living in a world where we are facing wild situations. These are wild times. Financially. You know, when you look at South Africa, there was a time where people were dying in shebeens. Short in shebeens. You look at TV, people were just short. Not in one area, different areas. You, you saw that. After that, you see women getting raped in different areas. After that, you see dogs, pit dogs, just killing people. I mean, this is not normal. If you look at it and think it's normal, it's not normal. This is a spiritual battle that we're battling. So we as Christians, we need to understand, Masalwan, that life will bring you a lot of things in your life. Life can bring you divorce. Life can bring you breakdowns. Life can bring you disappointment. But it is up to you to look at the disappointment and name it a different name. This, oh, you're not hearing me. This is not a disappointment. It's an appointment. Uh, you are not hearing what I'm saying. Because he can never appoint you if you are not disappointed. You got to name it a different name. God brings it to you and he sees. What are you going to name it? Because what you name it is what he's going to call it. Uh, you are not hearing what I'm saying. Are you catching what I'm saying, Masolan? If it is a breakdown, what are you calling it? Are you calling it a breakdown? Or are you calling it a breakthrough? It is, uh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. You, you have to name it. You have to name it. And listen, you don't name it by looking at it. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. I don't know about you, but this is my imagination. I, I believe that probably maybe an elephant came like a rat. Ah, this is what this is my imagination. But when Adam looked at the rat, he says, No, this is not a rat. He saw an elephant in a rat. He imagined it. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. This is if you had the picture of an elephant, now no, you, you, your, your mind is messed up now because already you're in Kurgan National Park. I'm talking about taking you back. He looks at it, he names it an elephant. It had to become an elephant whether it is a rat because that is what he names it. That is the power I'm talking about. The power that is inside of you as a child of God. Where you look at the breakdown and say, this is not a breakdown. It's a breakthrough. 
Ah, amen. Ah, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You, 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 got to, you, got to, you got to name it. You got to name it. He waits for you to name it. That's why he says to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what do you see? And Jeremiah said, I see an almond tree. And God says, you saw correctly. Because some of you, you have got a problem with your eyes. You can't see correctly. There must be eyes alignment. Stop. I want to stop taking your car and just aligning your car and leave your eyes, man. Go and align your eyes and see correctly. It takes Jim and Jack to tell you it is hot. Sorry if there is Jim and Jack here. Sorry, I'm sorry. It takes Jim and Jack to say it is hot. But it takes Peter and John to say it is cold. What do you see? In 2023, what do you see? What do you see? Huh? You look at your business. Just do a forecast. Forecast now. You know, I like those little ladies who stand there with the screen, with all the, the, the weather, and they come there holding a, a small thing like this. And, and they say, oh, in Nelspray, there will be 80% chances of rain. Who told you that? Huh? Who told you? Nelspray, there's 80% of rain. Who told you? Do you know when the rain starts? Do you know how to start rain? Can you form the cloud? No! That is not her duty. No, let's forgive the little woman. Her duty is to come and announce. <laughs> I want to listen to very carefully. We, we as pastors is to not to form the winds on the clouds, but to come to tell you in 2023, I see 80% of chances of prosperity in this church. I man, I, <laughs> I see it. <laughs> where, where do you get it? No, it's not. No, 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 it's not. It's not on my business. I'm just coming to announce that 2023. We are allowed to get off. Uh, I want to speak Afrikaans, you know, so you can hear me well. But I want to say something to you. Please listen to me very carefully. You know, I, 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 I feel God is saying this to you. That it might not have gone according to plans. But it's like God is he's repositioning you. All, all, all the discomfort, you know when you wear a shoe and it, it's painful, is to tell you that the shoe is not your size. So God is placing you in, is giving you bigger shoes. And he is expanding you. You, you, you. you must get rid of fear. There is a lot that you are capable of a, a, achieving, but fear has been holding you back. But God is saying, your season is starting today. Your season is starting today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. I, I, am, am I making sense or something? That's what I say. Our duty is to announce. Uh, we, we, we are announcers. You are believers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Name. So, look, I, this one, I like it. I like it. I mean, imagine, imagine Adam is sleeping. God takes, he takes a rib and he makes a woman. And the guy is sleeping, he's snoring. Eh? He was, I, I don't know, he was snoring. I'm just imagining snoring. Now, God comes. God comes. Okay, let me use my wife. So, Pastor Pesci, <laughs> Come, come, let yeah, it, it, bring, 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 bring my, 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 come with my, come with my wife. Yeah, it, go with Pastor Percy. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sleeping, I'm snoring, right? And I wake up. R remember, I know God, right? I know God. But when Adam woke up, this is God. This is Eve. He does not even think of God anymore. He says, ha! Ah! Ah! Oh, you're not hearing me. <laughs> For the first time, you know, if you want to prophesy, uh, uh, let me say this. When you see your wife, there must be an ability to prophesy. Uh, you did not hear what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, there must be, even if you are not a prophet, when you see your wife, there must, that prophetic thing must come. <laughs> Pastor Percy, when he woke up, ha! This is the bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. Jesus. And listen to what he says. He did not finish there. You see, don't prophesy things and you don't call them. He prophesied and then he called her. This will be called a woman. Thank you. Let, let, let me wrap this thing. So I can, yeah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Why we name? Why do we name? Just a few things. Number one, I'll go very fast so I can hand over the mic. Number one is to identify. You name to identify. A breakthrough that is not named cannot be identified. Let me say that again. A growth that cannot be named cannot be identified. Hallelujah. Number two, we name to symbolize. This is very important. When you look at Mercedes-Benz uh, 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 emblems, it has a symbol. It tells you of Mercedes. So it's very important for you. Listen very carefully. You must have a symbol of your future. What, what, every time you read the scripture, if you don't have a picture, you have not read the scripture. Let me say that again. When you read the Bible and you don't have the picture, you have not read the Bible, the scriptures. Because the scriptures must paint the picture of your future. And the scriptures must paint the picture of Jesus in your life. Now, if you read it and does not paint the picture of Jesus in your life, you are not reading the Bible. Very important for you to understand. The Bible has not been written to make us mad sinners. We are not reading to bypass the system. But three is to, or C is to describe. And D is to refer. When you name something, you refer. You refer it. And E is to simplify. And F is to organize. But this is the big one. We name to tame. What you name, you tame it. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? What, once you name it, what you, what, you, know, they, you, know, they, you know, there were a lot of rapes that were supposed to take place. Some people even raping their own mother. But because the mother has named this thing, this thing cannot do anything because it is tamed. Some of you, your future is very wild. Tame your future by naming it. Name it and tame it. Hallelujah, to God. Tame it, tame it. Otherwise, it will kill you. It will destroy your life. Here is the truth about naming. Number one, when you name, you are calling something out of something. We shall call things that are not as though they were. You, you are calling something that is not. So what you are saying is a breakdown, but you are calling it a breakthrough. You are calling breakthrough out. In, ev in every situation, Masalan, there is honey in that situation. In every, does not matter what situation you are in. There is honey. You just have to call it. And what you decide on this earth, it will be decided in heaven. That's number one. Naming is also creating. God created by naming the firmament. When he called the night and the day, he was naming it. Glory to God. So you got to name things in your life. Name your business. Name your situation. Name your crisis. And see, naming is revelation. You this, this to me is so powerful. You remember when just people call us, we say I am. 
says you're, you're a prophet. You're, you know, sometimes people can call you what you are not. And if you accept it, you will live an average life. Some say you're a prophet. I mean, if it was me, if they say, are oh, you a prophet? I say, yes. I want to be a prophet. Some say, Elijah, yes, I want to be Elijah. No, 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 no. Until Peter had the revelation, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Very important. Revelation. You got a name by revelation. And also as well, listen to this. Naming has to do with perception. What do you see when you look at the person? What, what do you see when you look at an individual? Every time I'm with Pastor Percy, when he looks at me, he sees something big. That's why I like to be with him. I like to be around him. He's not a diminisher. He's a multiplier. Yeah. Hallelujah. You, you, go where you are celebrated, not where you are tolerated. Yeah. That, you got to go where you are celebrated. Not tolerated. When you are naming, you are what? You have perception of something. For instance, you can look at the tree and see a tree. Someone can see a giraffe inside the tree. So what do you see? You got a name by perception. You got a name by perception. Also naming is programming. In other words, when God was saying to Abraham, you'll be a father of many nations, he was programming him. Programming something in his life. And lastly, naming is prophetic. God says to Jeremiah, Jeremiah says, I'm just a boy. I'm just a young boy. He says, you are not a young boy. You are a prophet. Hallelujah. You've got to name yourself. Don't allow people to name you. Here's the issue. If you don't name yourself, people will name you. They will name you. Apostle Percy, you know, I was called a son of the grave. The reason I was called the son of the grave is because my parents died when I was young. So I grew up as an orphan. I mean, I was so poor that even poor people were calling me poor. But when I received Christ, God spoke to me. You are not the son of the grave. You are the son of grace. Change my identity. The way I see it, my, look at myself. Praise the Lord. I was shy. All of a sudden, I started to put my chest up, my shoulders. I greet people with confidence. Why? Because I knew who I am. You know, life. Can be like McDonald's. You look at the advert there, you need a big beggar. Looks very big. Then the prophecies that were given, very big prophecies. But you order it. The time you go and collect it, you don't know what happened. It's like there was a shrinking process between the what you saw and what you are having. I'm telling you. Life can be exactly like that. You ask yourself, oh God, what is happening? Life, like Ezekiel, has a tendency of bringing you to bones and ask you a question. Can this dry bones live? You want end product, but he gives you bones. He says, prophesy. Name it. And he had to speak. This is not a bone, it's a soldier. <laughs> I don't know. You, 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 got to, you, got, you got to understand this. And this is what I feel in my spirit, Apostle. That your level of authority is about to shift to another level. When I was praying for this minute, God told me that the level of authority is about to shift to another level. There are certain people that are, have got powerful ministry, but they have no fathering. God is about to bring them to you. I, I, I wish you are hearing what I'm saying. It, even the church, church, you must understand. 
This man in the realm of the spirit, he's a father. She's a mother. They are going to father the fatherless in the realm of the spirit. Let me conclude. Genesis 35 verse number 18. Hallelujah. This is Rebecca is about to give birth to the last born and she is dying. And the Bible says as she breathed her last breath, she was dying. She named her son Benoni. Benoni. Ah, you know, you know, I'm telling you, whoever know, made name, name that place Benoni. I know I don't understand. Have you ever been Benoni? Names carries power. She is naming him out of pain. Sometimes you need someone coming from Jobek who does not know your pain. Who cannot sympathize with you. No, 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 no. no. They name you out of pain, but I'm going to name you out of power. She calls him because he, she, 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 it, was, she, it was painful giving birth to him. She calls him the son of my sorrow. You know, we are very good at dressing pain. We are very good at dressing pain. Even here, there's pain that is dressed up. Makeup. Sorrows. But he took his priestly position. And he says, this is the son of my right hand. Not the son of sorrow. Listen to me very carefully. It does not matter where you are at the moment. God is changing your name. He is changing your name. So, what am I saying? You are going to forget that this church has gone through rough times. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. Where they were going, there were people who were smelling. They were looking for smoke. But there was no smoke as an evidence that they have gone through fire. This church, you are going, <laughs> people are going to look at you and say, but this church did not go through anything. Because son of my right hand. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the father. Glory to Jesus Christ. I'm prophesying right now. That right hand is the place of grace. This is the message that God has given me. Grace is about to be poured in this ministry. In a way that you have never experienced before. Don't count what you have lost. Let's stand on our feet. Let's lift up our hands.
father is seven years. That's the number of completion. But number eight is the number of beginning. That great things that they have prayed about for many years. Let them be kickstarted by the grace of God. May you position this church not on the left hand side, but on the right hand side. This is the place where Jesus says, Throw your net into the dip on the other side, on the right side. By the power and authority of the Spirit of God. That you will take this church. To the place and the level and the dimension. That you have called this church to be. To be a lighthouse in the city. To be a voice in the city. Father I pray that revival will break out. And many people. Will come to this church. That this building will be too small for what God wants to do. You are going to have three services. <laughs> you are going to have three services. I see a, 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 a group of young people that are going to flock to this church. Not because of the music. But because of the anointing that rests upon your life. He is calling them from the east. He is calling them from the west. Out and the north. While our eyes are closed, there are people here. You need deliverance from people. You need deliverance from people. What people say, what people do, it affects you. And God wants to heal you from that. And there are people where financially things are not going well and you need God's intervention. We need to pray for you. As I call Apostle to come to the front. Come. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask that those that need prayer, specifically for the things that Pastor Adam has mentioned that we will pray for you afterwards. But I want us, whilst we are standing, I want us just to close our eyes. And I just want to, to just give everybody in this room just the opportunity. If you've never given your life to Jesus, you know the life that Jesus paid for cost him his life. And maybe you are here this morning, you've never made this decision. You know there are so many out there that don't believe that there's hell, they don't believe there's heaven, they, they believe that when they close their eyes, that is it. How sad is that? But I'm here to tell you today that through Jesus Christ, we have life, we have hope, there is life after death. And so I want to invite you this morning, I want to extend this invitation to you. All eyes closed, this is this is the most important part of the of this service. If that is you this morning, I'm going to ask you just, just to raise your hand and say, that is me. I need Jesus in my life. I need Jesus. I'm done with the old. I want to I wanna step into that which Jesus has for me. Or maybe you 
used to serve Jesus. You were passionate. You were on fire for Jesus. And then life happened. I want to say to you that the Bible says there is therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. And this morning, Jesus is opening His arms and He's inviting you to come. Why don't you just accept this invitation this morning and say, that is me. I need Jesus in my life. You know, we, we see the, the parable of the, of, the, of the son that went into the world and he lived all his money out. He lived a, a very dirty and a filthy life and he came to the end of himself and decided one day that he needs to go back to his father. And he decided in that moment that even if he had to work in his father's house as a slave, that he would do that. But as he, as he was on his way to his father's house, his father was waiting with open arms. He didn't judge him. He was not angry at him. And I really feel in my heart that I'm speaking to somebody in the house this morning. Jesus is waiting for you to come home. Lastly, maybe you've You've served Jesus for many years, but today you just need assurance of your salvation. The Bible says that we can be sure. So if that is you, I'm going to ask you this morning just to raise your hand and say, that's me, that's me. One, two, three. Just raise your hand and say, that is me. I need Jesus in my life. To our Facebook friends, if that is you, just raise your hand. Jesus sees you. Jesus sees you. He sees you. And so this morning, let us all just say this together. Heavenly Father, I come to you as a sinner. I repent of all my sin. And I declare this morning that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That He died for me on a cruel cross. He went to hell and was raised from the dead. He is now seated in heavenly places. Father, I ask you, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' mighty name. I declare that as from today, that heaven is my home, that I'm born again in Jesus' mighty name. Can we give Jesus some praise this morning? Let's give Jesus some praise. Praise the Lord. You may be seated, family. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Well, family, this morning I have the wonderful opportunity. Um, for all of us, this is our moment where we get to worship the Lord with our finances. And this morning I want to talk to you just a little bit about the presence and the anointing of God. The presence and the anointing of God is all you need in your life. According to Matthew 6 verse 33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and everything else will be added to you. There's three accounts I want to share with you with regards to this, just to, just to confirm what I'm sharing with you. The first account we, we see in the Old Testament where the Israelites, after they came to uh, the Jordan and because of their sin, because of their moaning and complaining, they had to go back and they had to wander the desert for 40 years. But in this 40 years, they followed the cloud. They followed the presence of the Lord. And here's the wonderful thing about the presence of the Lord. Wherever the presence of God was, there was provision. Wherever the presence of God was, there was protection. And you know that is a type and shadow of what we have today. You know, we think that the, the McDonald's um, uh, uh, drive through is a new concept. It's not. We think that Mr. Delivery is a new concept. It's not. You see, in that time, God came and He coined it. Because every morning they received fresh manna from heaven. I mean, it was delivered at their doorstep. Every day, every day, they had a fresh supply of meat flying into the camp. And I want to say to you that if we look at this, this portion of Scripture, if we look at the account of the Israelites, we have a better covenant than they had. Their covenant was covered by the blood of animals. But today, you and I, we, as a new covenant people, have a better promise, a better covenant with better promises because our covenant was rectified by the blood of Jesus, the Son of God. 
The second account that I want to share with you this morning, that where the presence and the anointing of God um, brings everything that we need, we see that in the in the story and the account of Jacob and his father, uh, Jacob the father and his son Joseph. We see that Jacob gave his son Joseph a coat of many colors. His brothers were very jealous and sold him as a slave. And after many years in prison, Joseph was brought before the Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph interpreted the dream that greatly puzzled Pharaoh. And Pharaoh wanted a wise man to run the kingdom for him, and he chose Joseph. And I want us to just pick up the story in Genesis 41. And it says there, And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this? A man in whom is the Spirit of God. Can you see the presence of God? Can you see the anointing of God here? There is no one as discerning as, and wise as you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I've set you over all the land of Egypt. The third account is the story of Daniel and King Nebuchadnezzar. We see that none of King Nebuchadnezzar's magicians and astrologers or sorcerers could explain the meaning of his dream. But God anointed Daniel and he told the king what he had dreamed was and the meaning of it. I pick up the story in, in Daniel 2 verse 46 and it says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostrate before Daniel, and commanded that they should present an offering and incense to Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar made Daniel ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. And we see right here in these two accounts, we see here that it is the anointing and the presence of God on Daniel and Joseph that brought, that brought the promotion. You know, in, in 1925, a group of archaeologists did a survey of the value of, the king, of King Solomon's temple. And by today's standards, we see that the temple will be uh, worth more than $200 billion, not rands, dollars. And if we look at this, we see that, you know, $1 billion in $1,000 nodes stacked on top of each other would be as high as a 100-story building. Now imagine 200 of those. You see, the value of the trumpets used in the temple is more than $1 million. The value of the robes that the priest wore was more than $10 million. The food in the king's palace was more than $34,000 a day. I mean, that is an account. Oh my goodness, can you imagine $34,000 a day? for your restaurant account. One of the sacrificial offerings that Solomon made to the Lord is worth more than $10 million. Now the question here this morning, what I ask you is, how did this happen? How did this happen? We pick up the story in 1 King, uh, Kings 10, and it says, So King Solomon surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom. And all the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God has put in his heart. You see, family, it was the Spirit of God upon Solomon that made the difference in his life. You see, if we look at these accounts, they had one thing in common, and that was the presence and the anointing of God in their lives. You see, the same God that gave these men wisdom and favor by his presence upon them which brought promotion, can do it for you if His presence is upon you. Now, family, I want to I start by saying the following. The measure of anointing operating in your life is direct, directly proportionate to your level of surrender. If you want to see more anointing operate in your life, you need to surrender in your life. You need to surrender more. This is, this is established through a deep and intimate relationship with Jesus. Family, our purpose in life is not to run after wealth and prosperity and money, but to seek His presence. To seek His presence. You see, it is the presence, it is the anointing of God. That is all I need. Because it is the presence and the anointing of God 
that brings wisdom, favor, promotion, provision, wealth, prosperity, and deliverance. As we get our finances ready this morning, if you are in need of an envelope, you'll find one under your seat. But please allow me just to pray for us over our finances. Let's close our eyes. Dear Father in heaven, we bring these tithes and offerings to you today. We worship you with them. And we dedicate this money to your service, to the extension of your kingdom. We know that you receive the sacrifice of our worship at this time. And you bless all of us for our faithfulness to you. Father, we thank you that as we sow this morning, Lord, that you promise a hundredfold return. We thank you that as we bring our tithes to the storehouse, Lord, that you continue to open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing too big to contain. We thank you that as covenant partners, Lord, that you rebuke the devourer for our sake, and therefore Satan has no legal right to touch our finances. We just bless you this morning and we honor you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Thank you, family. Thank you. Let's um, just direct our attention to the screens. Thank you. Thank you. Well, family, before I ask Pastor Adam to come and uh, just close the service for us, um, we've got the CFC Lofeld Sons that want to uh, just have the micro moment, I believe. So can I maybe just hand over? I don't know who is going to come. Pastor James, is it you? All right. Thank you. Let's just... Um, can Pastor James Perry. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am here standing on behalf of the CFC Sons, um, the Eastern Gatekeepers. Amen. We have organized something for you just to appreciate all the work that you are doing for us. Um, without you guys, we wouldn't be standing like this today. God has used you mightily in our lives. 
So I'm asked by all the other churches to come and present this uh, token of appreciation, and we believe it will bless you both. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I think, maybe, are you going to speak first, and then Pastor Adam will come? Um, Pastor Lee, just want to share with us quickly just um, what's going to happen after this. Um, there's obviously going to be cake and all of that, but let me not, let me not. He always does this. He ruins the surprises. So I want to say, there will be cake. Ta-da! I want to say... Please join us afterwards. We have a very special, delicious cake. It is chocolate, of course, because the best cake is chocolate. So afterwards, we are all going to go next door to our coffee shop. We're all going to have a delicious cup of coffee. And then we are going to blow up the candle first. So you're going to have to wait a little while longer for your cake. Then we're going to blow out the candles. And then we're going to cut the cake. And then we're going to have cake. But wait, there's more. Today we do it the other way around. Today we have cake first, and then we have lunch. That's the way I like it, by the way. You know, I would have, I would have a dessert for breakfast if I could. I would. So, we're going to have coffee in the coffee shop, cake, delicious cake. Please do not go anywhere. Wives, mothers, you have the day off today. How often does that happen? Mother's Day, maybe. You see, come to celebration, we give you the day off. Because after we're done there, then when we are ready, because they're just busy making everything uh, lovely for you outside, when we are ready, not before, when Pastor Lee says, let's go, then we go, and then we're going to go outside. We're going to have a street party today. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And you don't have to worry because we already spoke to the storms early this morning. We said, peace be still. We named it, China. Pastor Adam told you. We spoke to the weather. There is no rain today in Jesus' name. And we are going to go and have a big, big birthday bash. We're going to party like it's our birthday. Whoop, whoop. We're going to go outside. We're going to have a delicious meal. We've organized some fun activities. And for the kids, do you want to know? Do you want to know how we know that there's no rain? Because when we get there, you see children start taking off their clothes. Because what's waiting for them outside has never happened in this church. It is not just a jumpy castle. It is a slide. But no adults allowed. I'm sorry. I've already been told no adults are allowed. But we are going to have fun and games today, so please do not go anywhere. Join us for all the fun. Join us for the festivities. It is your party. This is your house. Amen. And our visitors, you are welcome in our house. We provided especially for you today. Pastor Percy told everybody, invite your world. So everybody is welcome today. Amen. Is that it? Check. I want to hold onto the mic, but... This is me, over and out. Thanks for coming. And see all the beautiful, please take photos everywhere. All right. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Well, um, I'm going to ask Pastor Adam and Apostle Maki to come to the stage and just to pray over the congregation. And then when we're done, I'm going to ask those that need prayer, Pastor Adam and Apostle Maki will be praying for you right directly after that. Then also all the all our uh, pastor uh, friends that are here, uh, we will meet you right in the corner there at the back. So if you can please just make your way to the corner there at the back. All right. Thank you, Pastor Adam. Apostle Maki, thank you once again. Thank you so much for uh, for your presence today. Pastor Adam, thank you for an amazing message. I know that we've been blessed. Thank you so much. Yes, let's give God praise. Let's give God Let's stand on our feet. I'll ask my wife to pray for us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And, and, and those that Pastor Adam called, maybe while everybody would be moving towards the tea room and the co cake and the coffee, but if you were part of that altar call that he made, and you feel you need prayer, 
we can just not let this moment pass you by with the permission of Pastor Percy, as he said that we were going to pray after the service. Family, can we just lift up our hands before God? We're just bringing thanks to God. We're not closing, we're pausing because this joy continues. This presence of God continues. This naming is continuing. So we're not closing, we're just bringing praises to God. Heavenly Father, you're not a man that you should lie. No, are you a son of man that you can ever change your mind. Everything that has been declared from this platform, O oh God, that we are, O oh God, empowered to name and we can call things that are not as if they are. We're taking that power with us, O oh God, as we are positioned in your presence, O oh Father. For nothing can be taken away from us when we are positioned in your presence. Align us, O oh God. Let our mouths be aligned, O oh God, with your word for us. Let our eyes be aligned, O oh God, with what you see for us. My Father, every person in this house under the sound of my voice and every family that they represent, I declare them blessed. I call them blessed. I call them more than conquerors. I call them prosperous, O oh Father. I thank you for your blessing, O oh God, that continues to rest upon each and every one of them, making them rich and adding no sorrow with it. Father, I thank you that even as they leave this place to go to every area, area of influence that you have planted them in, O oh God, that they carry your presence with you. They carry the anointing and the power to name with them. Father, they are not small people, but they are great. And greatness carries them. And Father, everything listens to them, even though nature obeys them, because they are people of power, carriers of your word, positioned in your presence, anointed and graced for such a time as this. These are no ordinary people, O oh God. We bring praises to you my father that these seven years were years of building down so you can begin to build up father if people had not known this house they are about to know it oh god because the walls are going up the walls are going up the walls are going up and the roof is to be laid we thank you lord for the seven years of foundation in the name of jesus in the name of jesus hey, Father, we bless your holy name. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We receive the land with thanksgiving. We thank you for the building that will be so fast and rapid and so speedily, O oh God. Your name will be magnified through this family. For you, O oh God, have brought them our way so we can believe and behold that you, O oh God, are doing a new thing that no eye has seen, no ears heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men. What you are doing at CFC, I am Bombella. And forward they go with Jesus. No more turning back. Father, we partake of this grace. For Lord, we know that if we connect together in you, who they are becomes who we are. We give you glory, Father, honor and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and all of God's people shout together and say, we shout and say, we shout and say, we shout and say, hallelujah. Woo! Praise the Lord. I think we can go into the second service. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, thank you, family. We'll meet you in the coffee shop. Pastor Adam and Apostle Maki will just be here at the front. If anybody needs prayer, please just come to the front. Thank you so much.